Okay, so if you remember, yep, make a little if we let u equal negative y squared equals negative two y dy. And we know that oh, one more line ought to do it. Du over negative two equals y dy. Okay, so if we kind of switch those around a little bit, e to the negative y over two y dy. Oh, sure. Sorry about that. end up with 2 pi from 0 to 1. Remember this becomes du over negative 2. So we have our integral from of e to the u du which is just e to the u. Bless you. Uh oh, forgot my yeah, I'll just leave that there. E to the U, DU. Okay, so since that DU is negative, well, DU over negative 2, the negative 2 here and the 2 cancels out. Should have enough room to finish this up. So you end up with negative pi. Integral of e to the u du is just e to the u. So it's e to the negative y squared from 0 to 1. So just kind of a refresher to the substitution method for integration. Oh, there we go. Okay, so if we plug in our 1, we end up with negative pi Plug in 1, you have e to the negative 1, which is 1 over e. Plug in the 0, you have e to the 0, which is just 1. Okay, so if you distribute negative pi, you end up with negative pi times negative 1 is positive pi. Negative 1 times positive 1 over e is negative pi over e plug that into your calculator, you should get 1.986, give or take. Uh -oh. There we go. Well, this is, of course, cubic units. Do you want that decimal on a test, or can we leave it in terms of pi? Oh, if you left it like that, that would be just fine. Not that big of a stickler. All right. So any questions on that one? All right. Anyone still writing? Yeah. Oh, okay. So this one, I'm going to do the disk method that we did in one of our previous examples, and I'm going to do the exact same one using the shell method. And as you'll see, we'll get the exact same answer. So if we use the disk method, And 
and shell method. Find the volume. of the solid formed by revolving the region bounded by the graph y equals x squared plus 1 y equals 0 x equals 0 and x equals 1 about the y-axis. I know. Pick up my pins like a split second too late. Okay, so if you remember our disk method, which we've already done in the section either before or the one before that, one of our volume was equal to pi from 0 to 1. Our outer axis, which our R y was equal to 1, if you remember, minus our inner axis. Just kind of doing a quick review of it since everything was done in detail on that example. Okay, so this is just pi from 0 to 1. 1 squared minus 0 is just dy plus pi from 1 to 2, 2 minus y dy. So you end up with pi of y from 0 to 1 plus pi times 2y minus y squared over 2 from 1 to 2. Okay, so you end up with pi. Plug in the 1. Plug in your 0 using the fundamental theorem. Plus pi. Plug in the 2. You get 4 minus 2 minus 2 minus 1 half, which, oh, which gives you pi plus pi over 2, which, if you remember, gave us our initial 3 pi over 2. So now we're going to solve the exact same one using the shell method. So I'll wait till everyone's done.
right. Put continue on this one. Now, if you remember the drawing or the graph, you have your X and you have your Y, and now we're going to use the shell method. Okay, so this is our X squared plus 1. We're going from zero to one. Okay. Now, since we're revolving around the y-axis, we're going to make our rectangle parallel to that y-axis. So you can just kind of draw a rectangle anywhere. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. Just a visual aid. Okay. So we know that our h of x, which is just the height of the rectangle, equals x squared plus 1. And our p of x, remember the distance from the axis of revolution, to the center of your rectangle, your p of x is equal to x. Now we'll give an example where your p of x won't be equal to x, and I'll show you kind of when that will pop up. So your volume is going to equal 2 pi from A to B, of P of X, H of X with respect to X. Okay, so that's going to be 2 pi. X is from 0 to 1. Remember, your P of X is equal to X. Your H of X is equal to X squared plus 1 with respect to X. As soon as you distribute your x, you get 2 pi integral from 0 to 1 of x cubed plus x dx. Okay, and that gives you your 2 pi. x cubed is x to the fourth over 4 plus x squared over 2 from 0 to 1. You have your 2 pi, you plug in your 1, you get 1 fourth plus 1 half minus 0 plus 0 is just 0, so you can leave that out. So you end up with 2 pi, 1 fourth plus 2 over 4, which is 2 pi times 3 over 4. The 2 and the 4, well, the 2 would cancel out and the 4 would become a 2, so you end up with, again, 3 pi over 2. Okay. So using two different methods on the exact same problem, you get the exact same answer. All right. So any questions on that one? All right. So like I said, you don't have to use a graph with this one, but it helps to kind of visualize it if you can make a graph. This way you can figure out where your P of X is and your, your H of X is almost always going to be your function itself. Where your P of X will vary, especially on this next example. So I'll leave this up for a minute. Yes. Um, question mm -hmm. about the difference between the two methods. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Um, with respect to each of the variables, is mm-hmm. it um, the same variable for the this method? Like for um, if it's rotating around the y-axis, it's dy, and about the x-axis, it's dx. Yeah, because it would be perpendicular using. So if you were using the disk method. You were revolving around the y-axis. Your rectangle would be perpendicular to it, right. so it would just revolve around that way. So that's why we had to use the method where we had from zero to one. We didn't have any, you know, openings at all. But from one to two, we did have one. So we had to use the washer method. So this disk method is just the well, the washer method is just the disk method to get rid of the center. So that's why we had to use that one. For the shell method, it's mm-hmm. the opposite. Yep, the opposite. Yep, so whatever your axis, if your axis of revolution is the y-axis, then your rectangle will be the same direction. If it's the x-axis, it'll be the same direction. But you would just use the different, respect to the different variable. Okay, any other questions on this one? So, let's say if we wanted to find the volume of the solid, Uh-oh. formed by revolving the region. bounded by the graph of y equals x to the third plus x plus one, y equals one, and x equals one, about the line x equals two. Now, x equals 2 is just a vertical line, same as the y-axis. So if we're using a vertical axis of revolution, we're going to use the vertical formula. Okay, so first let's start off with a graph since that's been known to help visualize things a bit. thing is we're only going to find the area from 0 to 1. Let's say this is our 2, which we know is our axis of revolution. So we're going to go around that axis.
So our rectangle is going to be here. Okay. So instead of the entire rectangle being from the height of the rectangle, rather, being from 2 to the top of it, our h of x, I'll put it over here, is going to equal x cubed plus x plus 1. And because it's one unit above the x-axis, you're going to subtract 1. Because when you have that height of x cubed plus x plus 1, and you add 1 to it, you have to take that 1 away. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. All right, which part did I lose? Oh, think of it this way. I wish I would have brought a pencil. It would be easy to erase. Normally, if you were just looking at something that was laying on the x-axis, your height would be from here all the way up to the top. But since it's starting at 1, your height is now from here to the top minus that 1. That makes sense. See, I'm seeing a lot of head shake, so it didn't make sense to everybody the first time around. So you should have said something. I don't know if you don't tell me. Sometimes that second explanation kind of clicks. Okay. Now this is where the P of X gets a little bit interesting. Normally, if you're just at the Y axis, your P of X will just equal X. But because now your axis of revolution is 2, your P of X, which is going to seem really strange, is going to equal 2 minus X. Because that value of 2 minus X here, because remember, X is just from here to here. So it's 2 minus that X will give you your P of X. Does that make sense? Anybody lost on that one? Okay. Or you can think of it this way. The distance from, let's say, your P is, let's say, X plus P. So if X plus P is going to equal 2, And that means that P is equal to 2 minus X. So it's two different ways you can kind of think about it. Does either one make sense? If one doesn't make sense, hopefully the other one makes sense. All right. Okay, so we have our P of X, we have our H of X, and all we have to do is just plug it in. Well, actually, your h of x, once you get rid of that 1, your h of x is equal to x cubed plus x. So that's the one we'll use. Okay. So we know that our volume is going to equal 2 pi from a to b of p of x times h of x with respect to x. Just a hair. Okay, so that's going to be 2 pi. Again, x is from 0 to 1. Of your p of x, which is 2 minus x, and your h of x, which is x cubed plus x with respect to x. Equal 2 pi from 0 to 1. We can just go ahead and use the FOIL method for that one. So you have 2x cubed plus 2x minus x to the 4 minus x squared. OK, 
Okay, so you have 2 pi. That's x to the fourth over 4. But the 4 and the 2 would cancel out, so that would be x to the fourth over 2. Plus, you have x squared over 2, which is just x. So x squared. Minus x to the fifth over 5. Uh-oh. Minus x cubed over 3. from 0 to 1. So bring that up a little bit. Okay, so if we plug in our 1, we end up with 2 pi. You have 1 half plus 1, clean that up a little bit, minus 1 fifth, minus 1 third, and as soon as you plug in all those zeros, it's just 0, so you don't even have to worry about that. So the least common denominator is 30. So you have 15 over 30. Uh -oh. Plus 30 over 30. Minus 6 over 30. Minus 10 over 30. So you actually end up with 29 pi over 15. Once the 2 and the 30 cancel out. So any questions on that one? Okay, so it won't always be, you know, if it's just around the y-axis or the x-axis, then your p of y is going to equal y, or your p of x is going to equal x. It's just when your axis of revolution shifts a little bit, that's when it changes up. Yes. Um, so about the range from zero to one. Mm -hmm. Will it always be like that? Or is it just for the for the top of the range for the top of the rest of the rest For the A to B. Oh, for this one it's just from zero to one because they gave you the axis from X equals one. Now, they would have said from, they didn't want you to give the one from x equals 2. You have this graph here, but this entire graph will just revolve around the axis. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Gotcha. All right. So, really, you have this big kind of volcano-looking shape going around that one point. And I'm not going to even try to draw it. So, the <laughs> range doesn't include the other side of it? No. Because it's just... Yep, just the just what's included in the original graph. Your recording's gonna time out in a second. Oh, thank you. Actually we're pretty much done with that particular problem. <laughs>